In October 2007, Swiss student Manuela Rido arrived in Galway. She was here for a two-week trip, but unfortunately, after only three days, she would be brutally murdered. Before I tell you more about Manuela and how she met her tragic end, I have to tell you about the man responsible for it and the timeline of events leading up to it. Gerald Barry was one of nine children and from the Roseanne Glass area in Rahoon, Galway, who later live in the Mareview area of Galway. His father left and it is said that his mother was an alcoholic who suffered from mental health issues and that the children were beat regularly. Though it would later be said that the children should have been taken into care, they weren't and they were basically left to their own devices. Barry would commit many crimes as a teenager, including uh, burglary, theft, drugs possession, violent disorder, among many others. At the start of 1996, Barry was sentenced to 18 months for malicious damage. But by the summer, he was already out. And on one summer night, a stag party from Tipperary were in Air Square in Galway, when Barry and three other teenagers set upon them. Barry, who was said to be the ringleader of the group, was only 16. Colin Phelan, who was 26 and from Tipperary, was one of the stag party. Barry struck Colin in the head with a bottle and he died. Gerald Barry was originally charged with manslaughter, but was convicted of violent disorder. He was sentenced to five years. He served two. Following this, during an aggravated burglary, um, Barry blinded a pensioner in his home. He was sentenced to two years for this, and I'm going to take a wild guess that he didn't serve the full sentence. Barry met a girl, and it is said that during the relationship, she suffered terrible abuse. In 2005, after the birth of their son, she left him. He didn't take this very well, and one night he broke into her home and sexually assaulted her. He would be sentenced to 18 months and serve six. She got a protection order against him, and obviously, uh, to protect the identity of their child, her name has never been released. In March 2007, Barry assaulted two Gardaí in Galway City who were attempting to arrest another man. In August 2007, he broke into his ex-girlfriend's house once again by climbing through an upstairs window into her bedroom. He got on the bed and started to strangle her. He was said to be drunk and demanding money off her. Obviously, their two-year-old son heard this and came into the room. Somehow, she managed to get over to her child and pick him up. Barry pushed her so hard that her head smacked off her son's head. Um, and still, she got downstairs, got out and started screaming outside the house. So Barry followed her down and before leaving, um, threatened to kill both her and their son. About 18 hours later, a 21-year-old French student um, was in Galway City out with friends. And it was a busy night, so when it came to coming going home, uh, she couldn't get a taxi. So she decided to walk home to Ballybane. When she got to the Mareview area, she noticed a man wearing a white hoodie and a baseball cap. And so she continued on, and before she knew it, um, he had come behind her, grabbed her hair, and put a knife to her throat. He said, do what I want, and I won't kill you. I just want to shag you. I'm going to try to get through the details of this um, as quick as I can, but for anyone who wants to skip it, when I'm editing, I'm going to put a timestamp here so that you know where to skip to if you want to um, skip the details. He had told her um, not to turn around and look at him, or he would kill her. So he dragged her into St. James's GAA pitch. Uh, this was only 10 minutes from her home. She pleaded with him and said that she was a virgin, but he ignored her. He started groping her. He asked if she liked it. She said no. And he said, you will. He then pushed her down onto her knees and anally raped her. After what must have seemed like forever, he made a deal with her that if she gave him oral sex, he would then let her go. After she did this, he went back on his word and told her to undress. When she did, he raped her another two times anally. After this, he noticed she was bleeding, to which he said, great. He let her go, telling her that he knew where she lived and that if she was to tell anyone, he would come and kill her. She somehow made it home. She took a shower and uh, went to bed. She tried to sleep. The next day, she went to the hospital 
but she was still so traumatized from what she had endured that she couldn't speak. And so on a piece of paper, she wrote, I was raped. Meanwhile, Barry's ex went to the Gardaí um, and told them what happened to her. And she described what he was wearing, a white hoodie and a baseball cap. So Gardaí realized that the two descriptions of the clothing matched. They were aware of Gerald Barry. And so they questioned him, but they didn't have enough evidence to charge him. On the 18th of August, Gerald Barry was in court for the assault on his ex-girlfriend and son. Uh, the Gardaí, who suspected that he was responsible for the rape of the student, were there and they objected to bail. But So a few things. So the judge was actually just like covering. It was a holiday period for the courts. And so they granted the bail. Um, one source actually says that the ex-girlfriend, when asked, said she didn't fear for her life. So obviously this would also have attributed to the fact that they let him out. But obviously the judge couldn't or wouldn't have known that he was in, you know, that he was suspected of a rape. So fast forward to October 2007. 17-year-old Manuela Rito was in Galway. It was her first time away from home without her, you know, without her parents. She was here on a two-week trip with 40 other students and two teachers. And um, they were here for like, you know, to do like intensive language courses during the day. And then, you know, like, um, you know, go out and socialise then at night. She was staying with a host family, the Tierneys, in Renmore, Galway. Manuela was from uh, Hinter Kaplan in Bern, Switzerland. She was the only child of Hans Peter and Arlette Rito, who would describe her as their angel. So on October 8th, Manuela left the Tierneys in Renmore and went to meet some friends in the King's Head pub in uh, Galway city centre. The walk should have taken like roughly 40 minutes from what I can get, but she actually took a shortcut uh, through an area known as the line. So it was like like grassland and wasteland um, that you walk through and then you go up towards like a walkway that goes along the railway line. And this went by uh, Loch Italia, Italia. At 9 p.m. when she hadn't showed up, um, her friend Azaria texted her, you know, saying like, where are you? Are you like, are you not coming? Um, and she got no response. The next morning, she noticed Manuela didn't show up for the classes. And so she rang her, but the message said the phone was no longer in use. That day, a man walking through the shortcut found a flowery backpack. Um, he thought that it would, you know, that it must have belonged to a student and he reckoned that it had been stolen. And so he kind of had a look and he noticed a purse on the ground. And then he found um, the body of Manuela Rito. Manuela was found naked from the waist down. Her coat had uh, was partially covering her and it had a rock beside it to hold it down. Her clothes were strewn around. She had been raped and beaten around the head. The killer had pressed down on her neck um, so hard that the two crosses on her chain had left an imprint in her skin. There were also cuts to her vagina and the two inch by three inch piece of skin cut out from her groin area. Her death was due to asphyxiation and analysis of her stomach contents and um, put her death at between 7.15 p.m. and 8 p.m. Her phone and digital camera were missing. A button from her coat was actually found above on the walkway. Um, so what Gardy reckon happened was she was on the walkway and someone grabbed her and dragged her down into the wasteland. Detective Shane Curran found a used condom hanging from one of the bushes nearby. Superintendent Tom Curley led the investigation. Gardaí would warn uh, young women who were going out at night to travel in pairs. The people of Galway were shocked by this horrific crime and they were in fear. It received huge media coverage in Switzerland and there was 50 Gardaí on the case. So Gardaí quickly put a list together of possible suspects who had violent or sexual offences. One of the first names to pop up on this was Gerald Barry, who was still under investigation for the rape of a French student seven weeks ago. Some sources say um, that they actually brought in four people for questioning, three men and one uh, woman, and that they were later uh, released. So I'm actually not sure if they were, you know, related to this or not. CCTV footage showed Gerald Barry on Main Guard Street 
uh, on the night of the 8th. This was about 10 minutes away from the crime scene. He was wearing a red jacket and a hoodie. When he was brought in to be questioned and he was shown the images of the CCTV, he said, that's not me, that man is taller, I don't own a red jacket. But his brother would confirm for Gardy that indeed he was wearing the red jacket on the night of the 8th. Barry's apartment was searched and Manuela's digital camera was found between the bed and mattress. Barry said he had never seen it before. So the phone. It turns out that he sold the phone for 30 euro. If you were buying a new-ish phone off someone for only 30 euro, dodge. And the person he sold it to apparently sold it on. And then that person sold it on. So the third person put their SIM in it and noticed that the phone was in a different language. That man's father, aware of the Gardaí appeal for the missing phone, took the phone and brought it and handed it over to Gardaí. Barry insisted that he was nowhere near the area on the 8th, uh, but his phone provider, Meteor, done an analysis on the phone for the Gardaí and it showed that texts had been sent um, that bounced off uh, towers in Renmore and near Locatalia and that a call was made at 7.20pm near the Locatalia Tower. On the 18th of October, Gerald Barry was arrested and his DNA uh, was taken. The swabs, along with the DNA collected from the used condom, were sent by helicopter to the lab in Dublin. They came back with a match. Barry was adamant that it couldn't have been his because he hasn't worn a condom in five years. Nevertheless, on the 19th, he was charged with the murder of Manuela. On the same day, in Switzerland, Manuela's funeral would take place with over 500 mourners. Uh, Galway's mayor and reps from the different language schools in Galway went over to attend. A memorial mass was also held here in Galway with hundreds attending. Gerald Barry was on remand in Castlereagh Prison and in March 2009 the trial took place and it lasted seven days. Barry would say that he was not guilty of the murder and that it was an accident. So his story was that he met the teenager outside a shop in Renmore and that she asked for the time. First thing, why would you ask for the time if you have a phone? He then said that he asked her where she was going and that she said the city centre and that he said he would show her a shortcut. Now, what I didn't mention earlier because it wasn't really relevant and I, the source that I got it from, it nearly sounds like victim blaming, but it is said that uh, the father of the host family, Martin Tierney, had warned Manuela not to take the shortcut known as the line because people had been moped there and stuff like that so that it was a bit of a dodgy place to go. But that establishes that Manuela was already aware of the shortcut. So she wouldn't have asked him and if he had said I knew a shortcut, she would have said no. So he said that he brought her to the line, to the wasteland and that they kissed and that then they, um, that she agreed to have sex and that they put their coats down on the ground, they had sex. And that after she, you know, sat up to say like that she had to go. And apparently he said that he sat up and like, you know, pulled her in. And he said that he said, oh, stay a little while. And that he made a joke saying like, oh, you can tell your friends about me. And that when she didn't respond, he let her go. And that she like, like fell um, unresponsive. He then said that he panicked. And so he dragged her body into the bushes, covered her with the coat and he said that when he threw like her clothes and her bag, her camera and phone fell out and so he took them. He couldn't explain the injuries to her head or like any of the damage to her genital region. The jury took just two hours and 38 minutes to find him guilty on all counts. Before sentencing, Detective Superintendent PJ Durkin took 20 minutes to read out his previous 60 convictions. Manuela's parents had travelled to Ireland and sat through the trial and um, it said that her father broke down when the details of her death were read out. In his victim impact statement he had said that the, the defence said a lot of lies about their daughter and that he, he wanted people to know that they were lies. He spoke how he would never get the chance to walk his daughter down the aisle and that his wife would never get to knit baby clothes for their grandchildren. Justice Barry White sentenced uh, Gerald Barry to the mandatory life sentence for murder. He was also sentenced to a further two five-year sentences for the two items stolen. Technically, he wasn't actually sentenced for the rape. 
in July 2009, he was found guilty of the rape of the French student and was given another two life sentences. For anyone thinking that like that's overkill, as I've said before in other cases, life in Ireland does not mean life. It means nowhere near life. The average is 15 to 18 years. So by giving him more life sentences, it ensures that he will serve a longer time because they have said that he has the propensity to want to kill and, and harm. And that is very likely that if he is out, he will rape and kill again. So by giving him three life sentences, even if each one of them was to be 15 years, that's 45 years before he's out. Like, fingers crossed. Colin Phelan's mother, Marie, was actually horrified when she had been told that the man who killed her son was able to go on and kill someone else and all these other horrific crimes in between. In 2000, she had actually spoken um, about how important rehabilitation was for criminals. But the issue is, and not just here, in other countries as well, a lot of the time people are, you know, sentenced and they're in prison and then the sentence is up and they're out and they haven't received education or therapy or whatever else they need, what programs they need to be able to be, you know, integrated back into society and, you know, stop the chances of them repeating offences or getting worse. I think in a documentary I, I watched on um, Mount Joy Prison here, they were talking about how, like, Prisoners who go in, especially kind of younger lads, will go in and they might only be, you know, like addicted to hash or cocaine or something like that. And they go in and they're they probably in for petty theft or something. But because drugs are so rampant in the prison system that they come out then addicted to worse drugs and then they'll commit more crimes because they need to they need to feed the drug habits. And it's just like this circle that they just in and out, in and out. Although I do believe that Barry is a different case. He is a violent criminal and he was in this. He's escalating. He escalated from like violent thuggery to sexual crimes to like, you know, sexual assault to rape to murder. After he was sentenced, uh, Superintendent Tom Curley had said that Galway was now a safer place for everyone with Barry put away. The Manuela Rito Foundation Ireland was set up. Um, to raise funds for um, counselling, education programmes, services and the money raised has helped a lot of different services. They do a lot of um, like prevention workshops for secondary school students in the west of Ireland. The 2018 article that I saw, it said that um, the foundation has raised €880,000 so far, which is just phenomenal. And it's, it's, such, a, it's such a nice memory. Manuela. The Ritos, who are patrons of the foundation, actually travel back to Ireland every year and um, they've even gone to the scene of their daughter's death and they lay a, a white single rose. They said they find comfort in the fact that when they do come back, um, faces become familiar year after year. There are actually some um, some lovely pictures I'll, I'll put up um, of, of the couple smiling, talking to secondary school students that are part of a choir who, you know, would have been part of the fundraising for the foundation. Gerald Barry is serving his um, life sentences in the Midlands prison. It is said that he is hated by other inmates and has been attacked several times. Good on them. It is said that he has become pals with Graham Dwyer. Anyone who doesn't know who Graham Dwyer is, you can search him. He's also a murderer similar um crime except his had the his was sensationalized because it had the um aspects of bdsm in it but so the two sexual violent criminals um apparently buddies Fifty. to be quite frank the irish state the legal system let manuela and other victims down if gerald barry had done his full sentence for um, the malicious damage in 1996, Colin Phelan would still be alive. If Gerald Barry had not been out on bail for the assault on his girlfriend and son, he would not have been out to rape and murder a 17 year old. A 17 year old child, because I think sometimes you read stories like this and you think, especially when you were 17, you think like you were, you were a grown up and stuff. But you were a child. At 17, you were a kid. I've said before that our justice system is not adequate sentences are not 
harsh enough and again as i said before prison systems are not set up to help rehabilitate criminals i just truly hope that his life sentences will mean life and that he will not be out i'm hoping it's gonna be the case of the other video i done of like um uh, sean evans where they knew that they had such a likeliness to commit those like horrific crimes again that they were just never allowed out you know what i mean and i'm hoping that that's going to be the same for gerald barry because it has been said that he will commit those type of crimes again so we just have to hope that he won't be allowed out for more than one time so yeah that is the tragic case of manuela rito and all the other victims in this story um thank you for watching and for listening and hopefully we will see you in the next video. Thanks.